Hello everybody, Paladin here and this is my guide on race strategy. Together with the knowledge of Doghouse and Mike Murphy and many others, I prepared several important points that should help you to better understand when you should pit and how you should approach a race in a hole. The goal of a race strategy is to be as fast as possible in your current situation. Please don't expect wonders from an optimized strategy. But if you should experience such a strategic wonder, make sure to share it with us on Discord or here in the comments. The first point is a simple one. Basically ignore tire wear. By the way, this assumes quote unquote normal race settings with fuel consumption and tire wear. I know how ignoring a game mechanic sounds, but hear me out. Yes, you lose time. In fact, you lose over one second per lap with worn tires. But keep in mind that you can lose a lot more without fuel. This already sets an important baseline for our race strategy. Focus on fuel and keep your car's health at 100%. Only after that start thinking about your tires. To focus on fuel, you should know how much you consume per lap. I always check my fuel meter on the start finish line as a reference. Then it is only some maths and you end up with how much fuel you need per lap. Additionally, what really helps me out is having some key numbers remember. Like if you need 12 fuel per lap, you can drive 8 laps without saving and vice versa. Same with 9 and 11. I also calculate before the end of a lap how much fuel I should have left at my current rate of consumption. For example, when I have 53 fuel left and I know that I use 12 fuel per lap, then I know that I should have 41 fuel left when I cross the start finish line for the next time. If I have more left than expected, I know I can push a bit more. If I have less than expected, I know I must save fuel to get my stints as planned. A focus on fuel will inevitably lead to a situation where you have to save fuel. And for fuel saving there is an important thing to say. Save as much as you can. This statement, like every other statement in this video, has to be taken with a grain of salt. Because as you can includes awareness on how many laps there are left in the race and how much time you are going to lose in the process. So keep this in the back of your mind. But why should you do this? Well, apart from having enough fuel to finish your race, you should also take into consideration that the more fuel you have left, the fewer time you need refueling on the next stint. This minimizes time spent in the pit lane. Right now, the common method to save fuel is lift and coast, meaning lifting the throttle mainly before and during turns in order to preserve fuel. This has the added benefit of preserving your tires to some extent, but however, keep in mind that you should firstly Ignore tire wear. Another method of saving fuel was pointed out by Dremit. In his video he showed he could effectively save fuel by only driving at 90% throttle. This could prove really effective for controller players and is something important. You can find a link to the video in the description and in the info card on your screen. There you can also find a link to a video from Minardi where he explains fuel saving. Additionally you can save a lot of fuel using the slipstream of the drivers in front of you. or of the back markers in front of you. Here you should keep an eye out on the slipstream indicators behind your car and if you get slipstream then you can let go of the throttle for a while without losing too much time. This is a great tip on ovals as well but I will come to this later. Now let's finally talk about pit stops. I would advise to stay long enough in the pit to have at least tires fully changed. This normally yields like 50 to 60 fuel back, but when you follow tip number 2 and you know how much fuel you need for your next stint, you can leave the pit lane earlier with just the fuel you need. You don't have to wait for a full tank on every stop. This once again helps you reduce time spent in the pit lane. Position your car in the pit lane the right way because if you drive into the box and stop too far away from your crew, you will lose time because your crew needs to walk up to your car. A big thing pointed out 
except by Doghouse to me is the pit lane delay you can experience online. In theory, you can't drive out of your box five fuel earlier than intended. I think this has something to do with the netcode of the game, but either way, I think this is a hugely useful tip and will help you even further minimize your pit stop times. When you leave or enter the pit lane, always be aware of traffic. You can quickly end up in an accident when you don't take a good look on the minimap while planning to pit or to exit the pit. The simplest yet effective strategic approach to circuit superstars is the undercut. This usually looks like this. Just kidding, this is what an undercut in circuit superstars look like. To do an undercut on track, you have to pit one or, in rare circumstances, even two laps earlier than your opponent. With this simple tip, you can gain a significant amount of time. There are some conditions. First of all, the race you are racing needs to have at least one pit stop. Second, if you pit earlier, this extends your second stint by the amount of laps you stopped earlier. This may require some fuel saving. When you have to save too much fuel, you also lose a lot of time, so you can lose the position you gained by pitting earlier. The worst case would be to have to do a stop more because you misjudged your fuel. But since you follow tip number 2, I bet you can judge how much fuel you need and how much you would have to save to be successful. Let's shortly dive into a topic that is still hard to determine. Why is the undercut this strong in circuit superstars? Well, in motorsports and especially in Formula 1, there is most of the time also the possibility to gain positions via an overcut. This means you could pit a lap later than your opponent. And yes, you can do this in Circuit Superstars and sometimes you can gain positions with an overcut in Circuit Superstars, but it's highly unlikely in good lobbies. Basically, from my limited knowledge right now, the undercut works so good in Circuit Superstars because your outlap of your car is so much faster than the inlap of your opponent. And this difference in speed and lap time is strong enough that undercut is well, let's say 99% of the time the best strategy to do. Also keep in mind that overtaking is a hard thing to do in CSUP. If you overcut your opponent and you get a better pace with fresher tires, it won't mean you can breeze by easily. If you want to learn more about this, I would recommend the channel Chainbear to you. He has some great videos on race strategy, the undercut, the overcut and many other topics. The exception to the undercut ties into what happens on track around you. If you are only fighting with one opponent and the rest of the feed is somewhere far off, then you won't face traffic. But in highly competitive lobbies, this is certainly a problem, as you can see here in this example. If you encounter traffic on track, it can be beneficial to abandon the undercut and stay out for one or a few more laps. Also, when you are out in the lead, you don't necessarily have to do an undercut. Since we now know what the best strategy in Circuit Superstars is, we should also talk about how def to defend from it. Well, you can undercut harder. But this requires you to be extra careful with, with your fuel, so this is hard to pull off. What works slightly better is to cover the undercut, meaning you come in on the same lap as your opponent. But this bears some risks too. First of all, you have to actively anticipate your opponent's moves. This can work if you are behind him and you see what he is doing, but if you are in front of him, it is quite hard to determine. I feel like the best tool in hand to defend from this is to have a viable race strategy on your own. 
You can anticipate how much fuel he needs to save based on your own fuel consumption. If you pit one lap later and maybe lose the position but you are still in slipstream range, there is still a big chance that you can overtake your opponent again on track. Also keep in mind that you are racing against a human being. We all make mistakes on track and if you stay within striking distance, you can still have a chance when the car in front catches a corner cutting penalty or doesn't get the racing line properly. This point is pretty self-explanatory. If you proceed to battle someone on track, you will lose time. It won't feel that way for you because you are too focused on making the final overtaking move, but in the meantime your pursuers will come closer and the leaders will have an easier time to get away. This is something that is easy to understand but very hard to actually perform on track. Because when we realize that we have a marginal chance of passing someone, we will most of the times try this. But always keep the goal of a race in mind. You want to win. I understand that a well fought 4th place feels like a small victory, but if this fight keeps you from going for the big win, then was it really worth it? The better way is to work together with the car in front of you. Don't disturb his racing lines, but trust on his abilities to close up to the next car in front. If you achieve this, you can go for an undercut through the pit lane and try to overtake them, or you wait and see if now the bigger group starts fighting for positions. Because this is the point where you can make an attack in a group and you can overtake multiple cars with a well placed lunge up the inside of a corner. With this you can make up multiple positions instead of just one. Leading a race isn't always beneficial for you. If you are in front you will have no slipstream whatsoever. Keep in mind that only leading at the end of the race matters. So if you find yourself in second place shortly after the start of a race, stay patient and don't proceed to take the position as fast as possible. Because you know, tip 7, battling makes you slow. Maybe you can use tip number 5 and do an undercut and gain the upper hand in the fight on track this way. Okay, I want to be honest with you guys. I really don't like oval racing in circuit superstars. It never fully clicked with me and from my experience in ICSTC and normal online lobbies, most of the time ovals are rigged with incidents. So I avoid them whenever I can. Nonetheless, ovals are a part of the game, so we have to talk about it. Special thanks again to Doghouse and Mike Murphy who really helped me out with this part. So we just came from a tip where I said that leading a race isn't always the best thing. Well, in oval racing, you should only fight for position at the end of the race. Otherwise, you will certainly get overtaken by someone with slipstream behind you. And this brings me to the next point. Because slipstream is one of the most important tools to win in oval racing. And therefore, losing the slipstream of the car in front is basically the worst thing that can happen to you on an oval. Maybe besides getting crashed by some random guy. What you want to do for the race is to drive in tandem with other cars. Basically how track cyclists do it. Also, whatever you are doing, hold the inside line on an oval track. With this it is basically impossible to get overtaken. In fact, this is so important that you should move to the inside line right after the start. This will most certainly give you a significant advantage. If you need tips on how to prepare for a league event, you should watch Starrex's video. He gives a great overview on how you can train for league races. When you want to go for a long race with multiple stints, you should prepare your strategy beforehand. How exactly do you do this? Well, there are multiple ways. Let's assume the race settings are known. Otherwise, it wouldn't make much sense to prepare for the stints. For the start, you go to free play and drive as fast as possible until you have to review. This is your baseline of laps for your stint. Most of the time you can drive for a couple of laps more if you saved enough fuel. So you should try this next. Save as good as you can and see how much you can extend your stint. You have multiple options now. You can compare your total race times or you can extract your lap times per stint from a recording, for example with OBS. Both options are viable, 
However, it can be very time consuming, especially if you are preparing a race with four or more stints. What works best for me is to work with stint blocks. You get some flexibility from that and you don't have to plan everything in game. This takes the baseline of laps for a stint as a block and with the total number of laps known you can plan ahead. This way you can plan undercuts by placing a longer stint behind a smaller one and so on. I don't want to go into detail here that much as the script is getting longer and longer. But if you apply the tips to these stint blocks you can end up with a pretty effective strategy for your next big race. Alright let's come to the summary. To summarize it you should follow these basic guidelines to have a successful race strategy. First ignore tire wear as fuel is much more important. Focus on your fuel. Know how much you need per lap. Know how much laps you can drive with your consumption. Save as much as possible for your position in the race. In the pit stops, position your car in the right way in the pit lane. Know how much fuel you are going to need. Not every stop needs to make it up to 100 fuel. Be aware of the online delay and be aware of traffic. Now for actual race strategy, the undercut is the best strategic tool that we have available at the moment, so you can overtake someone in the pit lane with this. This could require you to save a lot of fuel, so be aware of traffic and be fast on your outlap. Prevent it by covering the undercut and being prepared. Battling makes you slow. You don't have to lead a race on every lap. And ovals are different, only fight for position at the end, don't lose the slipstream and undercut doesn't work good on ovals. Alright, that's all from me for now. Make sure to like the video if you liked the video and leave a comment if you want to add something. If you have questions, feel free to DM me on Discord or I don't know, send a letter. It was nice to make another video for you, maybe I'll be back. Bye.